Meisner makers, thank you for joining us today as we go through the License to Create program. Now, if you already have your License to Create bundle, then you have your box and you have your beautiful bag. Um, we're going to take you through hints, tips, recommendations, what's in the box, variations on the projects that are involved. If you don't yet have your License to Create bundle, there is time. Email us at info, I-N-F-O, at MeisnerSewing.com, or you can give us a call at 916-920-2121, or visit us on the web at Meisner, M-E-I-S-S-N-E-R, Sewing.com, where you can order your kit and have it shipped directly to you. Now, when you receive the packages, and these are so beautiful, I don't know about you, Jody, but I was a little bit sad to open mine because it was so pretty sitting in my sewing room. <laughs> yes, but it was fun to like, break out and get all the cool stuff It was out. totally fun to open them up. So I'm gonna open this box just a little so that you can see what's inside. And we're gonna take a look at the products and we're gonna go through each of the products as we go through the projects. So when you open it up, it really is just like receiving a beautiful gift. So there are stabilizer products in here. There's batting in here. There is uh, iron-on chalk vinyl in here, beautiful foil vinyls, um, a sheet with information about how much of what is in the box. And then in the vinyl bag, Jody, what have you got in your package over there? Well, I have... Some more. Some more. Some more embellishment products. I have some fusible bond. I have batting. If you need to tape something down, they've even thought about putting oh, the tape, tape in, tape. which is yep. pretty awesome. And the best part of all of it. Might be hard to get out of there. <laughs> I'm working on it. Look at this awesome binder that has all of your products, all of your projects, and it has cutting charts to the back, which I was really impressed with. Mm -hmm. It like, and it tells you exactly what it goes to and which out of white, black or gray, um, it breaks it down and it's, I was very impressed with this. And one of the things about the cutting charts, if you'll flip back to that, those pages again towards the back. So there's a master set of cutting pages in the back. And then when you open up your rolls of products that are inside of your box, you're going to find another set of cutting instructions. So this is your reminder as to how many pieces, which pieces and which products you're cutting, cutting for. And then in the back of your notebook, it's gonna show you how to cut out from the piece of yard goods that you have so that you have enough product in there. And I thought that was a really thoughtful touch to ask. Okay, so as you're going through your project, um, just keep that in mind. Now, as you look through your booklet, there are projects in here that you're gonna look at and you're gonna say, you know, I really love this, I can't wait to stitch this. And then there are some that may not be your taste. Well, one of the things that we're gonna show you today is you know, how to customize some of these projects. Um, I tend to go for more of the teals, fuchsias, gold, silvers for the holidays. Um, but also as I looked at some of these projects, I could see ways that they could be used well beyond the holidays. So with this binder and with the, the product information and everything that's in your box and in your clear bag, not only, you know, don't think about this just as a, a project bundle, but it's also an education bundle. It's gonna give you the opportunity to play with products that maybe you hadn't had a chance to get your hands in before. And I don't know about you, but when I'm using a new product, sometimes I like to um, have a practice project rather than having the stress of, oh, this is my project, this is something that I am so strongly attached to, and I'm learning how to use a project yeah. product. And you don't wanna make a mistake. Exactly, so this is your opportunity to play. So with that being said, when you get your box home, Jody, what did you do with yours? I know you, you handled yours a little bit differently than I handled mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that I got the big package box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got all the goodies. And the first thing I did was is went through literally everything that was in there mm -hmm. and tried to familiarize myself with it. And then went, okay, so why would I use this? 
and what project did it go? And then it was like, okay, what projects do I want to do first? Mm -hmm. And then you said what I wanted to do first was. <laughs> <laughs> so I did those first. That was our secret. That was a behind <laughs> oh, You're just busted now. <laughs> but um, so I, I picked out the projects that, uh, that Jennifer and I wanted to do first. And um, I kind of started off with their theme of farmland uh, or farmhouse mm -hmm. Christmas. And then it's like, Farmhouse Christmas really isn't me. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of more funky and whimsical. And so you'll kind of notice that in my samples today that um, that's what I did. One thing that I'd like to point out though is when we, I think, when you get your roll of stabilizers and they're all listed, some of them are on the inside. Mm -hmm. And you pull them out to see what that stabilizer is. Well, instead of putting it back in there, just take and wrap it around and put a rubber band around the front so that it's just a lot easier to find. That was another thing that I thought was really excellent. Mm -hmm. Everything is tagged. Yes. And I thought that was I just very good. I didn't have to link any of the stabilizers to see if they were water soluble. Yeah. So yeah, I found that that was very helpful. Also. Yeah, I didn't have to rip anything that didn't rip. <laughs> exactly. But I just found that very helpful that once I took it out of the center, I just mm -hmm. wrapped it around the outside. Yep. And, and those bands were already there for yeah. us. I liked and that so too. I thought that was great. Okay, so then the other thing that we started to look at, because we did, the first thing we did was we said, okay, which ones do we want to do first? After we had stitched through a number of these projects and had the opportunity to experiment with the different products that were in there, we've put the um, order of operations, so to speak, in order of one product, then the next product, then the next product. So as we go through today, we're going to share um, product information. But as we get further through, the projects that are included in the binder, we're not gonna cover them in as much detail because we'll have already talked about the products in the earlier projects. So then we'll just, it'll be a little faster as we go through and it'll be more about hints and tips and making it your own. So with that being said, the very first project that we're gonna take a look at is the embossed towel. Do you wanna hold that one up, Jody? Now this is one. This was one of the. I think this is the second project I did when I was still doing the farmhouse, and um, it was like I brought it in Jennifer and I go, yeah, yeah, I, but it needs something. Yes, because without the ribbon, you can see it's, it's very. It still is very pretty, but look at how that little trim on there just adds a little something to it, right? And it makes it a little more personal, makes it yours. Yeah. And so, so I got that added on, and it kind of matches one of the other projects that we'll be doing later on, mm -hmm. and that was the cookie plate, because this actually could be used in your kitchen. Oh, yeah, that would be so great in the kitchen. It, it, so the, the yep. fabric matches. Yes. So. so now this particular towel is done with a software technique called knockdown, or called embossing. So when you're stitching on something that has a lot of nap, like toweling or like um, velvet or velour um, or polar fleece, mm -hmm. you know, it really benefits from having a lot of uh, stitching, essentially, Yes. so that it holds that nap down over the life of the product uh, project. On your the USB stick that's included in your license to create package, and you're going to find it in the vinyl bag, uh, not only are the design design files there in multiple sizes, so you don't have to have a top of the line machine to do this, uh, but you're also going to find uh, some videos. And there's a video on how this process is done using the Embellished Maker software. So when you are stitching out something like this, it's helpful to have a design that has a lot of um, underlay to help emboss and to push that heavy nap down. Currently, Embellish Maker software, which is what was used to create this design, as well as Craft and Cut software, are available basically in a subscription service. So that's something you may want to take a look at. You don't have to invest in the full program. See if that's something that you like. On your USB stick, in addition to your design files, your printable template files, uh, and your project instructions, you're also going to find some videos. And there's a great video showcasing how the stitch is out, and how it was put together in the software. So that's a really nice um, add-on to have. Gives you just a little bit more information before you take that plunge into the world of software. So, products that we need to successfully stitch our towel. In your License to Create binder, 
50 project instructions. This is really nicely done. Again, it's going to list the materials that we're using and tell you how to prepare. So the materials that we're going to be using for the towel, we're going to use a sticky tear away for the back and we're going to use a rinse away clear topper for the top and we're going to use template paper. Now, why are we using a template paper? Well, because <laughs> to hoop this in the center mm -hmm. is really hard. So when you do anything that really has a, a pile or a nap to it, you don't really want to hoop it. You want to just lay it on top. And that's why we're using a sticky back wash away. Now, it's a sticky, it's sticky, it's a tear away, but this particular tear away over time will dissolve and rinse mm -hmm. away, which is really uh, nice on something like your towel. So it's got enough body to hold the towel while it's embroidering. Uh, but over time, it is going to go away, so you won't have anything left in the back of your towel. And it also doesn't leave it stiff. Yeah, it's pretty soft. I like that. So anything that's a difficult to hoop item, ready-made items, if you're trying to stitch in a collar, on a lapel, um, on a child's garment, where you don't want to deconstruct everything, you just want to adhere it to the hoop and stitch. This is a great stabilizer type to use. So I'm going to hand that to you, because you'll demonstrate how mm -hmm. we're going to use that. And then the other product that we're going to use is a clear rinse away topper. It looks a little like plastic wrap or like saran wrap. It's very soft. Um, if you're in a humid climate or a humid area, I keep my water solubles in the refrigerator. Oh, it get, makes them a little crispy. Mm -hmm. a, and typically in a uh, plastic bag, plastic zip top bag. And I keep That's my new plastic bag mine. in the closet. And, keep, and I keep it zipped mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get moisture. Exactly. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't steam this, right? Prior to use, keep water away because it will dissolve mm -hmm. with water. This is not a stabilizer. This is a topper. Toppers go on top of fabrics that have nap. If I were embroidering, obviously a towel that's mm -hmm. got a lot of nap, velvet, velour, t-shirts, sweaters, um, polo shirts, anything that's got visual texture to it, they, your topper over the top in conjunction with your traditional stabilizer is going to help to keep those fibers down and keep your embroidery from shrinking down into your fabric. Okay, so that's your rinse away clear topper. Those are the two embroidery stabilizing type products that we're going to work with for this towel. And now Jody did mention the template. Now this template obviously is not the template for the design that we're going to put on the towel, but I wanted to show you what this looks like. So this is your adhesive template tear away. Okay, it comes in a package like so. You will find it, I believe, in the clear bag. Inside, you're going to have sheets. One side is kind of rough and fabric-ish. The other side is shiny. What you're going to do with this, well, two things. The file on your stick is a uh, PDF file. When you get ready to print, when you go into your print properties, make sure that you are printing actual size. That is a box that's a checkoff box in that print properties. If you choose something like fit to page or any other option, it's not going to print a template in actual size. Okay? You want these in actual size so that you can use them to position your design on your project and make sure it looks the way you want it to look, which we'll see um, see that illustrated really well when we get to the um, the round cookie plate yeah. uh, panel piece. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that this is used for is to help to position your design on your fabric at the machine. If you have hooped and you have not hooped 100% in the center, this is going to give you some guidelines. Now, when you're ready to use it, actually, one of the things that I do, and I think, Jody, you've already done this on your template, mm -hmm. right, is I trim around the design itself. I don't need the whole piece of paper. I need the part with the design and the part with the crosshairs. So I'll trim that around away. And in fact, I have one right here that's been trimmed. Then you peel it off your backing paper. Keep your paper. You may want to embroider this design again. Some of these projects really lend themselves well to gifts. So you may be doing multiples. And then you just stick it back on after you've used it. You don't stitch through this. It's just used to create a visual for you and to help you position your project in the hoop. Okay, so those are the items you may not have worked with before. 
So we're going to now take a look at how we put all of that together so that we can stitch out the towel. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready, cameraman doll? Yep, we're ready. Okay. Okay, so I have hooped my stabilizer, which is the sticky back tearaway, and paper side up. I've scored it lightly and I've pulled it off, and here's still a little bit left. And now I am going to take my template, which I've already printed. And you notice it has all the crosshairs. And I'm going to ever so easily um, remove the back off. There we go. Save your back so that you can remount it. Now you want to decide how far up you want on your towel. Usually I just kind of eyeball it maybe a couple of fingers worth. Place your template down. If it's not perfectly straight, you can adjust it in your machine. And then I'm going to bring over my towel and kind of line it up the crosshairs with my marks on my hoop. And it's now ready to go over to the machine. Okay, so if you'll notice that I have it, I have it hooped and it's been moved over, but you'll notice that my needle is not in the middle position. So on my machine, I'm gonna go out to, I went to my layout and I am now gonna to go to my move and I'm gonna jog over Jody is using the Solaris 2 today, but all the embroidery machines will have a move function so that you can do the same thing to be assured that your design is centered appropriately. I also can turn on my W light to see, oh, it looked like I was like spot on, but yeah, as you can tell, I am not, so I need to move it back until my crosshair is on that center. Looks awesome to me. So now that it's all centered and everything, it is now time to remove the template paper. And we're going to remove it and put it back onto that backing that it, that it came with. Okay. And so now I have the ability to keep this in place and I don't have to worry about it moving. I can do a basting box on this machine. A lot of the machines have basting boxes, but I'm gonna put my topper down first because it's easier to get to the basting stitches when I go to remove it because it has a plastic film as opposed to trying to pick it out amongst the pile. So we're just gonna slide that in. And you're going to tape your edges down with the perfect stick tape. So now it is ready for me to go ahead and do the basting box. And on um, your machine, there's a little flower with a box around it. And you notice that now it has put a basting box around the design.
And that basting box will help to hold that water soluble copper in place so that it doesn't come up from the tape while you're embroidering that. Absolutely. Also, I'd like to point out too is that sometimes when you get really thick towels, you can raise the height of your presser foot if it's a little bit too too tight. That's kind of kind of just perfect the way it just went. But if it was really dragging, then you would want to raise your foot. Okay, so after you've got your basting box in, you are now ready just to start embroidering and ready to go. Now, in real life, you are going to embroider the entirety of the design before we go to the next step. But what's important here is not for you to watch the needle go up and down on the machine, but to know how to set up your hooping for your towel, which products to use, why, and then how to remove them at the end. So you have your water soluble topper at the, on, on top. What I will typically do once my design is completed is I will come in and I will pull away and you'll find it pulls away pretty easily from any place where there's stitching. Now on this design, there'll be some areas on the inside as well. I keep a little um, water bottle, spray water bottle mm -hmm. in my sewing area. I would give it a little spritz and then with a washcloth dab in here to remove the bulk of the stabilizer. Then you also have your sticky tear away on the back. Now, because this is stuck to a towel, I don't want to pull it away from the towel because that can disturb the nap of the toweling. So again, I would take that damp washcloth that I used on the front, take the damp washcloth, lay it over the back of my embroidery and let it sit there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Now this is damp, this is not soaking wet. Then when I take that washcloth away, this is out of the hoop, you will find that the stabilizer will pull right away very, very easily. You'll still have a little bit of stabilizer that's left in here, like you can see on the back of this towel. And now I can either soak it or throw it into the washing machine to remove the rest of the stabilizer. And then it's gonna come out nice and clean like Jody's and soft. Hers is nice and soft because it's been run through, it's been soaked it hasn't run yet run through the washer. No, I just um, soaked it and fluffed it in the dryer. It. Now, remember that this, the sticky back that we used is a sticky tear away. What that means is that technically it's not a wash away, but the way this particular sticky tear away is manufactured, over time, those fibers are soluble and they'll break down over a few washings and completely um, be eliminated from the back side mm -hmm. of the toweling and keep it nice and soft. So Jody, then the one more thing, um, did you just top stitch your trim in place? Well, what I did was, is um, I did originally, mm -hmm. but the band was off a little bit right here. Uh -huh. So it wasn't equal and it was like, yeah, I wasn't liking that look. So this was already folded under a quarter inch. So I lined it up with the top and I actually stitched it down where it was. It was right it, side right this was, way. Correct. Did my quarter inch mm -hmm. and then I flipped it over and then I ironed this as I needed to, to make it, cause it was like right in here. Yep, so it would line up. And so it would all line up. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so that's the towel. Are we ready to move on to the next project in our box? Yes, we are. All right, are we ready <laughs> cameraman Joel? Yep. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Okay, so the next project that we're gonna stitch out is one of these great little reusable um, chalk board vinyl gift tags. So they're nice, they've got two layers of deco bond in here. They're nice and heavy duty. You've got um, the chalkboard vinyl on the back so that you can personalize them and you can reuse them. So what a great environmentally friendly holiday item. So the products that we're gonna use for this particular project, um, one of them is called Deco Bond or Deco Magic, excuse me. And it's a foam that's fusible on one side. You can stitch through it, you can trim it, you can cut it. It's great for uh, giving shape to projects like these um, tags. It also is really nice for tote bags, for handbags, for anything that you need to have a lot of structure. Again, it's fusible on one side. Um, so in the case of the tags, 
what we're going to do is we're going to start, according to the instructions, by adhering the fusible side to the front side of our gift tag. Now you can do this using a traditional iron. I really like to use the press for this. So because this is meant to be a permanent fuse, I am gonna use my press and just give that a quick press to fuse it in place, remove it, and now it's ready for us to use in one of the sewing steps for our tag. So I'm gonna hand that to Jody. Now, another item that we're going to be using for this project is vinyl, it's adhesive vinyl chalkboard. And I've already pre-fused it to the adhesive side of a piece of deco bond, because again, we need this to be a permanent bond or deco magic, excuse me. Um, we need this to be a, pure, a permanent bond. Now, I'm gonna hand that to Jody because that's for the back side of the tag. When you unroll your chalkboard vinyl, it is very deceiving trying to figure out which side is the fusible side and which side is the carrier sheet. So I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and peel one corner once you've cut these so that you can readily identify which side is the carrier sheet. And I just pull back a little bit at the corner. You may need to get a little pin in there because it is pretty well stuck to its carrier sheet. But you do wanna know which side is the carrier side and which side is the fusible side before you position this on your iron or on your digital die cutter if you were going to digitally die cut. Okay, so I have located my right side. I would then fuse that to my deco bond, which we have already done. Now, what else could you use this vinyl chalkboard for? Really anything, um, any place that you would use a traditional heat set vinyl. So it could be a garment project, it could be a craft project like the tags. Um, a little bit further on in the binder, you're gonna see the countdown to Christmas, a piece that's done using your adhesive vinyl as well. As a tip, um, I did find that cutting this with my digital die cutter, with my scan and cut, was really a, a nice way to get a good clean edge. This is a very soft vinyl, so you're gonna wanna use, uh, you're going to prefer the look that you get by using a digital die cutter. Now the other product that we're going to use as we stitch this design out is a foolproof repositionable webbing. So what this is used for is holding a fabric in place like an applique until it is time to stitch that applique or as that applique piece is being stitched in place. So just like the sticky tearaway that we used in the towel project, it has one side that's a carrier side and the other side that's sticky. So we're gonna place it on the back of our applique fabric. Again, it goes into the press, a quick seal, and then we are ready to take it to the machine. Now this one is also a permanent adhesive, so it's gonna be really nice for things like raw edge appliques, which in the case of these tags, these are raw edge applique pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove that backing so that it is prepared for Jody as she's stitching out this project. Now, one additional tip. Uh, when working with Deco Magic, it is a little heavy weight. And so I know when I stitched my tags out, there are four different tags. I gathered them all together in one hooping to stitch them out. That was a mistake because the Deco, bond, uh, the Deco Magic takes up some space. And so it was a little difficult to be able to get in there and do any kind of trimming or position the next, um, deco magic piece side by side because they were a little larger than the finished embroidery designs. So the pro tip here is don't overcrowd these in the hoop. It's better to hoop twice or three times versus having difficulty getting in there or having your pieces shift and bump around because you haven't left quite enough room. So those are the new products that we've added in addition to the products we talked about in the towel. And Jody is gonna show us how to stitch one of these designs out. Okay, so the first step is, is uh, I'd like to point out that this is small enough that you can do this in a four by four. I am in a five by seven. So, cause I'm only gonna stitch out one. So you don't have to have a really big machine to do all four of them. You can do them clear down to a, in a four by four hoop, which I thought was really nice. So the first thing that we're going to do is, is it's gonna stitch out a placement line. OK, 
Okay, and so now it is now going to do a tack down, and we're going to use the, the piece that has the deco bond that uh, Jennifer just sealed for us. Make sure that your deco bond is going over the whole tag, and it is actually a little bit bigger, and you can tape it down. So it doesn't move. The one thing different about this is, is we are not going to be trimming anything as we stitch it, with the exception of the little kind of medallion that comes in in a, in a couple of steps. So you might want to just tape this down and uh, stitch away. So now this is doing its tack down. Our next step stitch is, is is we are going to now use our applique piece so we have we have to do a placement line first So now we're going to take the piece, and remember this is sticky, repositional, so we're going to stick that down. And we're going to stitch it, we're going to trim it, and then we're going to hit it with the iron so that it stays in place. So this is our tack down stitch. Oh, that's nice, it's a decorative tack down stitch. Okay, now, now we need to trim away our excess fabric on our applique. Remove the hoop and it's small enough that I can work on my bed of my sewing machine but you never want to hold this and push up on your applique because you're actually pushing on your uh, stabilizer and loosening your stabilizer so if you hold your fabric at a 45 These are our new scissors. These are nice. I haven't used them before. They're very nice. And we're going to hit it with the iron. So you just, I'm just going to press it real quick. And we're ready to continue on. Okay, so now we're ready to do our decorative um, snowflake in the middle. This is a nice, really quick little design so that if you wanna, you know, get a bunch of them done. And I like the idea that they are recyclable because this, this, this chalkboard, it just wipes right off. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're now going to put our back on. So we need to remove it from the machine, but we're not unhooping it. And we are going to place our chalk vinyl to the outside. And we're going to tape all four corners, making sure that we have covered the whole design that we've already stitched. OK, 
Okay, now it's going to stitch all the way around and secure the back to the front. We only have two more things to stitch. It's now going to do a basing line for an eyelid. This is where we would put a hole through it and then use the string and, and ribbon or whatever, however you want to tie it on. Okay, so now our design is done. And the only thing that we need to do now is take it out of the hoop and trim it up. I would like to also too is when it did that first stitch, if you don't do the very last stitch, you can use a, a metal grommet and to color coordinate. So that if you wanna, you know, reds, greens or whatever that you're wrapping with, you can change that and add it as a, a metal grommet up there. So the final step in completion, or the second to the last step in completion, is to trim away just to the outside of this stitching line. Now, because we use Deco Magic, which is a permanent fusible, or creates a permanent fusible bond, we don't have to worry about anything fraying out the edges. So I'm using my Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. I love this because it is so, um, it ha it's nice and heavy. So it, I don't feel like I'm having to press and put a lot of pressure, particularly when you're going through so many layers like we are here. We've got the layer of fabric, we've got the deco magic, we have the chalkboard vinyl. So it can be pretty thick to be going through with our rotary cutter. Also, it is made for both a right or a left-handed user, which is nice as well. And one more side to go here. It also closes quickly and easily, so you don't have to worry about that blade being exposed. So here's our tag done. Just needs that hole punched, and then we can attach it to our gift of choice. Now, one other thing that I want to point out, here we did use flawless embroidery thread, which is gonna give you a slightly heavier look. See how beautifully that stitches out with that thread. Now, depending on your personal preference, I really like that we've got some high contrast here and we've got some high contrast here on the back. If you prefer on that last step when you're stitching out that outline, you may want to wind your bobbin with your flawless thread as well so that you have the same thread on the back as you do on the front but it is again, a matter of personal preference. So those tags are ready and we can move on to our next project. So the next project uh, that I wanna talk about is this Deck the Halls wall hanging piece, which is right here. Now I thought it was really um, sweet just by itself, but to me, it just screamed out to be attached to something like a wreath. So what products and what processes did we use to create this um, dimensional piece? This is made in a, using exactly the same techniques that we just used in stitching out the um, gift tags. The one difference is you are going to, there is a step where you're gonna trim away the excess while the piece is still in the hoop so that the final stitch out can go around and seal this with a nice satin stitch. Now, a couple of things that I want to point out um, that we neglected to talk in too much detail about with the first project. You notice that Jody did some pressing in the hoop. There are several techniques within the projects in the binder where you're going to be needing to do some pressing as you go. You do, it is extremely helpful to have a small little mini iron like the small Dritz travel iron because you do need to get into the hoop. Um, also, there are some projects in here where you're going to be using some um, items that are heat sensitive. And so using that small iron, you're able to get work in and around some of those items that you don't want to apply direct heat to. Now, when I'm doing embroidery and I don't want to have to move around too far in my um, embroidery in my studio, 
I do like to have the wool mat here so that I can just have this positioned right by the embroidery machine, do my pressing in the hoop as I go, and it just helps me to get things done much more quickly. Now, also in the instructions for both this project and for the tags, it calls for using matte thread. So these, there were several spools of matte thread in your bag. It's a 40 weight matte embroidery thread. And I think I kept calling it matte. It's flawless is the type of thread. It is a matte embroidery thread. And it's gonna give you a slightly different look than your traditional embroidery threads will. Rather than having the sheen, it has that nice flat finish. So it gives a kind of a vintagey look, I think. Yes, I have a hundred ideas of what I want to do with that <laughs> as soon as we get it. All <laughs> right, so let's talk about the additional stabilizer products that were used in this project. Get that panel back up. Oh, perfect, one take. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the stabilizer that we used for both the tags and what you will want to put in your hoop to stitch out each of the components of the love, peace, and Christmas wall hanging. This is embellished bold tearaway. I love this. It has a nice crisp hand to it. It tears away very cleanly. It doesn't leave any fuzzy fibers sticking about. And it, what I also liked about this is there are some times when you need something like, uh, something relatively soft to stay in the project for the lifetime of that project like a mesh type stabilizer, but the mesh isn't quite enough to keep your fabric flat during embroidery. So using this in conjunction with that uh, mesh type stabilizer is gonna give you a better finished look. Now, if you've been following along in some of our videos, you know, I've talked about, pre, about st test stitching your embroidery designs. And this is where um, you're gonna learn those tricks, like layering up your multiple types of stabilizer in order to get the effects that you're after. So that's the embellished bold tearaway. It's great for that. It's great for decorative stitching in your hoop. Now, I didn't, I chose to skip this step on uh, my piece, but you'll, if you're reading through your instructions in the binder, there are also some, also some lace snowflakes that can be stitched out and you can attach them dimensionally to your piece. Now, in order to stitch those out, truly it is nothing more than putting a matching thread on the top and in the bobbin, and then you're going to hoop two layers of rinse away mesh. So rinse away mesh is very similar. It has a consistency of almost like a very thin paper towel, okay? There are other types of water soluble stabilizers out there. I like this one for lace because it is pretty substantial. It doesn't rip and tear in the hoop, okay? Um, depending on whether you want your lace to be very pliable and soft at the end, or whether you want it to have a little bit more body over its lifetime. If you want it to have a little more body, I spritz it and I don't worry about getting all of it out and it almost acts like a starch in my fibers. If I want it all the way out, then I'm just gonna soak it or depending on what it is, run it through the wash to remove all of that stabilizer from my project. So that is embellish, rinse away, mesh. Great stuff to have on hand for your lace. And again, matching thread top and bottom. If you want something that has a little bit different of a look to it, you know, go experiment with using that matte thread on the top and on the bottom for a different look. Now, one final uh, tip that I wanna give you before we move on to the next project. Now, I mentioned that the difference between the tags and the Peace, Love, Love Peace and Christmas project is on the tags, we trimmed everything away at the end. So we expected to see the fabric, we expected to see the um, edge of the deco magic. This is finished with a satin stitch all the way around. Now, there is no way around being able to see a little bit of that deco magic sticking out of the sides. And depending on what color fabrics you're using, it is going to show through that satin stitching, no matter what it is that you're doing, especially if you are using a very high contrasting thread. So your pro tip of the day, there is no such thing as perfect embroidery. What we wanna do is make that embroidery look as perfect as possible. So what I did was went around the outside edges with a black Sharpie to cover up any of the edges of that deco magic that were showing when my project was done. And I promise you from up close, you would never know that. 
So there is your pro tip of the day in every embroiderer's um, notions drawer. You should have a nice package of permanent markers in lots of different colors. They are great for any of those times when we're not paying attention and maybe we should have changed that needle and you get a little bit of bobbin thread that pops up to the top. That's what your permanent fabric markers are for. You just go back in there and color it. No one will know if you don't share that information. All right, cameraman Joel, are we ready to move on? Yep. Okay. Okay, so the next project that we're going to take a look at um, is this little wall hanging. I have to say this was my absolute favorite project um, in the embellish mm -hmm. uh, box. Uh, it has a little bit of everything and it's sparkly and it's so easy to customize with the colors of your choice. So in this piece, what we're gonna learn about is embroidering with mylar. We're gonna learn about using puffy foam for some added dimension. We're going to learn about uh, cutting adhesive foil and how to apply that. And then we've got some little decorative stitches here on our machine. So this is a great place for you to experiment with some of those stitches. Now, further along, we're gonna be talking about um, that cookie plate runner. And one of the um, techniques that are used, or that's used in that is embroidering rickrack. So if you wanted to use embroidered rickrack here instead, you could stitch the file from that cookie plate um, runner and use that rickrack in lieu of, or you know, in addition to the decorative stitches that are here on the, the canvas piece. So some tips and some hints for putting this together. Oh, as an aside, I loved this snowflake so much and I was so inspired by this particular project that I had some um, glitter vinyl left over from some other projects. This is the same snowflake done in glitter, adhesive glitter vinyl, and then scaled down in smaller sizes. And we're gonna show you how to use those last little bits of leftover vinyls that are just too precious to throw away. Uh, how to use your scan and cut to position your um, cutting files right over those little bits so that you use up all of those leftovers and don't worry about wasting any of that beautiful vinyl or foil. Now this is mounted to a canvas board. So I have just, a, I think it was an eight inch canvas board, whatever size it says in your notebook, that's the size that you wanna use. Or make your, your piece a little bit bigger. Remember that you can adjust your designs according to your personal preference. So this is just a, a craft store canvas board. And we have our fabric piece, here it is. Now this project calls for using fusible fold tearaway. So like the tearaway that we used in the last two projects, it is going to tear in all directions so that you can remove it from your project. Now we've fused it in place and this is gonna be used on our little board. So I really wanna just fuse it in place and leave it there. And I have found that truly the best way to fuse this was using my press. You can do it with an iron at home. You're gonna to have to be a little more patient with a traditional iron, um, especially as you get larger pieces. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get it fused in place. With the press, it was just in, press, and done, and then move on to the next section. So I was really quite pleased with how that worked. Now, I am needing this to be the correct size for my canvas board. If you're working with a machine like a Solaris or like a Luminaire where you have projectors, et cetera, it's a little easier to position, but you still wanna make sure that you're working within that eight inch square, okay? So a trick that I wanna share with you is to take your pink perfection tape, and I used my pink perfection tape to mark the finished size. Now this is the finished size. There's no seam allowance. There's nothing else in place here. I just needed to know where my design was to go. Okay, so I would strongly recommend doing that. You can take your fabric once you've adhered your stabilizer to it, lay it down on a flat surface, wrap it, slightly and then just lay your tape in place. That gives you a nice visual so that when you then come in with your printed templates and you start positioning your printed templates on the fabric, you know exactly how much room you have 
for the rest of the elements within your composition. Now, the projects that we've been working on today, um, we've got a lot of space still, especially if we're working with a very large hoop. So where these come into play, in particular, the larger your machine is and the larger your hoops are, is if you're starting to get into a project that ha that's gonna require multiple hoopings. These templates are very handy for making sure that you've laid everything out and you've positioned your composition the way that you are most happy with. Okay, so I'm gonna let Jody decide where <laughs> the template needs to go. And then we're gonna come around on the other side of the machine so that you can see how to embroider with Mylar and Puffy Foam. Are we ready, cameraman Jill? Yep, let's go. Okay, so I have hooped my fabric and I have placed down my template. I have lined up just like I showed you earlier. I'm now going to remove this. And I'm going to stitch out the very first one. And it's gonna do a placement line first. And our new product for this one is, is we're going to be using Mylar. So I'm going to place my Mylar down and I'm going to use my tape and ho to hold it in place. My next stitch I'm going to do is going to be a, a fill-in stitch. And at this point, we are not going to tear away our mylar yet. We're going to go ahead and fill it in first <clears throat> and then tear it away. going to give us one, <clears throat> one more stitch all the way around. So I'm going to go back to my red thread. ready for the mylar and if you kind of pull it out of 45 you get a nice clean pull if you do have any piece any small pieces left just pull them with your um, pull them out with your tweezers it, it really does come out pretty easy this is gonna be a, a red and white ornament <laughs> Very traditional. Now the single line that it's doing right now, this is a placement line for our phone. As soon as it does the next one, next placement line, I'm gonna change my thread to white. Thank you. 
and now it's going to do the puffy foam. So I am going to lay my piece of puffy foam over the ornament. I'm going to tape it down. Okay, done with the first ornament. And you're going to remove your tape. And your foam. And you have a raised decoration on each one of your or, uh, ornaments. This process is the same and for everything that asks for puffy foam and any of the designs or several other ones that will have it. Um, when you pull it towards it, when you're pulling it off, it gives you nice clean finishes and nice clean edges. So that would be my trick is make sure that you're pulling it towards it and not stretching it out. So that way you get your nice clean uh, edges. And that's how you do puffy foam. Okay, so a couple of things that I want to remind you of uh, before we continue on. Don't forget that on the USB stick that's included with your license to create pro uh, boxes, there are a whole number of videos in there and they give you some great tips and tricks for working with the products that are included in your box. Now, something that I just find fascinating about the Mylar is this is what it looks like when it comes out of the box. And oftentimes I'll have people ask me, well, where do I get different colors of Mylar? Well, you don't need different colors because the magic of this, it should be called Magic Mylar, mm -hmm. is that depending on what color thread you use with the Mylar, it's going to take on a totally different look. So Jody, uh, let's look at your, um, your little project pouch there. And you can see it almost looks silver or black or red, right, on mm -hmm. this particular project. On the one that we just stitched out, it has just a real iridescent look to it, right? Almost like peppermint candies. On this project, they're very pastel. See, I told you this was my favorite design. They're very pastel looking. Again, it's all about the thread uh, color that's stitched over the mylar. Here, they've got a much more jewel tone look to them. And again, it's all about your thread choice. You really can't make a mistake no. with this. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind with your mylar, remember that I said it's really helpful to have that small little mini iron. You don't want to iron over your mylar. It is a heat sensitive product um, and it'll just wither and go away, right? So all of that effort that you put in and all of that sparkle will just disappear. So don't press over your mylar. Um, other projects that include mylar, the countdown till Christmas. So Jody stitched hers out as a wall hanging. I love it, very traditional colors. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Well, what I did was is um, I just decided that I wanted something to hang. And I bought this fabric five years ago. I just like it because it's very whimsical. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, mm -hmm, well, what am I gonna do? And I really don't have a lot of Christmas fabric. So I pulled all this out and um, it has a little holder for the chalk right here. And I actually had buttons that match. It's adorable. <laughs> and, but if you, because I used red and white in here, my mylar looks totally different than Jennifer's who used more of a plum color. Yeah. And so I did mine um, closer to the instructions in the binder, creating it uh, as a, a framed piece. Now I did choose to leave the glass in mine. You can put the glass in, you can leave the glass out. Uh, primarily because it's here in the store where I knew there would be a lot of touching. So the glass protects the fabric and everything in place. And I'm using a chalk marker. And the chalk marker, you can wash off the glass very easily. Uh, the instructions for this heat set vinyl chalkboard tell you to use traditional chalk. 
I would tell you test whatever it is that you're going to use on that chalk um, on that chalkboard vinyl to make sure that it, it is removable. That would be horrible, right? To write that it was 28 days still until Christmas and then you can never get that off. Perpetually, it's 28 days till Christmas. So we've covered all of the techniques in this countdown with the exception of cutting the vinyl that we're going to do in just a minute. So we've done the mylar, we've done the positioning, um, we've done traditional embroidery, and that's, those are the techniques that are used in that particular project. Puffy foam. And puffy foam. Um, so now we've done puffy foam on this project in a very small way. Uh, puffy foam is going to be used as well in the Be Joyful pillow. So here you have puffy foam, exactly the same way that we just did it on that ornament. We have a small little ornament here with mylar, exactly the same technique that uh, we just used in stitching the one ornament for the wall hanging. So there's the only new element, and we're gonna cover that in just a few minutes, is the chenilling that we see here. Uh, but before we go there, let's see, was there any place else? I think we've hit, oh, your pillow. Yep. There's puffy foam used here in your pillow. Yep. So on this one, it basically has, it's almost every technique that is in the book. Mm -hmm. So you have your chenille, you have your mylar. Oh, I forgot there was mylar. Yeah, there's mylar there. This is stitched in the matte red, which I really love their matte thread. Uh, this is vinyl and this is puffy foam and this is puffy and this is puffy and then it asked you to hit the mylar with a cover on it with a little bit of heat to crinkle it up to make it look like it was chrome so it's basically everything that we've been doing oh i added this on um, it actually says uh, the the smiths established, established it yeah mm -hmm. something else and that's. now a word about that um, if you have software, and in one of the videos that's on your USB stick, it will talk to you about how you can change out the text that's included mm -hmm. as part of the design. Pro tip, the design is in there in two sizes. The large size, where the text is all together with the truck, for those that have the very large hoops, uh, but it's also in there in a split file for those that have smaller machines. So if you don't have software, and you don't want to put Smith family established in whatever year, use the split file that will stitch out the truck and the tree. And then you can use the alphabets that are built into your machine to add whatever text you want. Now, the other thing that I want to show you again, it's all about personalization. I have to confess I did it this way because I wasn't reading all the words. Okay. So, <laughs> true confessions. So I missed the part that there was supposed to be puffy foam <laughs> on my truck. So this is what it looks like without the puffy foam. You can see it has much more dimension with the puffy foam. Also, I, cho I chose not to stitch out chenilling on mine. I used just a um, raw edge applique for this one. And I did use a layer of the repositionable web so that I would get a nice strong fuse. So I'll get a little bit of fraying, but I won't get a tremendous amount of fraying. Okay, so the couple of techniques that we have left that we have not yet covered are chenille and then cutting our vinyls using a digital die cutter. And what I really am excited about showing you with that is not just how to cut and how to weed, we have some tips for that, but also how to use those last little bits of that precious vinyl and that precious glitter vinyl that you might have kicking around. Okay, cameraman Joel, are we ready to move on? Yep. Okay. So we had talked about doing the chenille and we showed you samples of it. Um, so I'm going to quickly demo how to create chenille. So the first thing, uh, we're gonna do the be uh, joyful, but I fast forwarded a few of the, <laughs> of the uh, elements to stitch out and we're just gonna do the part that does the chenille. So the first thing that we need to do is have a placement line. And in the pillow, you might have noticed it was just the J and the Y that were chenille.
So the next thing we need to do is, is this one has the reposition, repositional adhesive to the back of it. That goes down first. And then you just rub it down so it'll stick. Okay, so I have now put down my first piece and it has repositional adhesive to the back of it. And it is now going to do a placement, a tack down line. So now that I have done my placement stitch and my tack down stitch, I am now going to trim away the fabric around the J and the Y. So now that I've trimmed it away, I am now going to take the other three pieces of 7x7 seven seven fabric and place them right on top of it. I'm going to tape it down and we're now going to stitch the channels that will create our chenille. Okay, so now it's created its channels and it's now going to do a basting stitch all the way around so that we know where to trim. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is remove it from the machine and I'm going to trim around the letters. Okay, so we have now done the, the basting line all the way around the letters. You are now going to trim all the way around the basting line. After you've, if you've trimmed all the way around the basting line, you're going to remove those basting stitches and you're going to then chenille cut between the channels and then you're just going to fluff it up and then that's how you do chenille. All right, so there are several projects that call for some type of um, digital die cutting using either heat set vinyl or some other type of product. So we're going to walk through how to do that. I've inserted my license to create USB stick into my scan and cut, and I'm going to select retrieve data. I'm going to retrieve the data from the USB stick. And for this example, we're going to cut the snowflakes that I love and have used so many times. So we're going to scroll down to the art canvas. And we're going to choose the folder that's called cut file. And we're going to choose the digital cutting file. Now, if you didn't have a digital cutter at home, there is a paper snowflake pattern. You could print this and use it as a template and cut using scissors. We're going to choose our digital cutting file and we're going to choose our snowflake. So here's our snowflake. 
and we are going to load our mat. Now, if I were stitching the snowflakes the way for the projects themselves, then I would have my entire sheet of uh, vinyl on my mat. Well, this is assuming I haven't cut anything yet. But what I wanna show you is how to adjust the size so that you can use your um, snowflake or any other pattern in different sizes, and also how to use up those last remaining bits of vinyl that you may have. Now, both of these are heat set vinyl. With heat set vinyl, that means the adhesive is facing up and we want the carrier sheet to be against the mat. Now this particular vinyl just didn't want to stay put, so I have a little bit of pink tape to help hold it in place so the edges don't curl up. So we're gonna start by loading our mat. And now I need to know where my vinyl is so that I can resize my snowflake properly. So let's click OK, and let's choose the scanning icon and press Start. So my scan and cut is going to scan the mat, and then on the screen, I will be able to see exactly what's on my mat, pink tape and all. Okay, so we can see that our snowflake is considerably larger than the pieces of vinyl that we have. So we're going to select Edit. Now for the sake of you being able to see, we're going to go over to the lighter colored vinyl first. So we want Object Edit, and we need to change the size of our snowflake. We need to make it quite a bit smaller so it'll fit on that last little bit, oops, last little bit of vinyl. Smaller, not bigger. And let's drag it over. It still is a little too large. We need to go smaller. Ooh, look at that. And I have been cutting snowflakes for several days, so I do know that this is gonna work. All right, so our snowflake is there. It looks like I have room for one more, so I'm gonna click OK. And I'm going to add, I want one more, and OK. Now my one more. I'm gonna drag over, and so now I have two snowflakes sitting on top of my pink glitter vinyl. Now, I do want one more to go over that black vinyl, so we're going to add one more. Here it is, and now we're gonna make this a little larger and then drag it over on top of the black vinyl. Oops. Back here to object edit and increase the size. The red lines show me exactly where my snowflake is. It's now right in place over my vinyl and I'm ready to cut. So we're gonna select okay and okay again because we're done the editing process. Okay, one more time and OK. Now the machine wants to know what we're going to do. Please select. We're going to cut. Now because this is vinyl and we don't want to cut through the carrier, we want to make sure that half cut is on and it's always a good idea to test. So we have a little triangle test cut. We want to move it off the pink tape. We're going to slide it down towards the bottom of our vinyl. And press start. Okay, so let's check to make sure that it cut just through the one layer. And it did. So we're now ready to cut the remainder of our snowflakes.
So our machine is done cutting. We'll say OK. Unload our mat. And now we're ready to go over to the light box to weed our designs. So we're going to use our light box to finish the weeding process. You see I've gotten started over here with these little tiny guys and look how perfect they are. I love how beautifully that machine cuts in all different sizes. So we're going to just get that vinyl going here and lift it up and out of the way. So remember, all we want left is going to be the portion of the design that will become the iron-on. Once we get it lifted a bit out of the way here, let's go right to the outer edge. So that we can get a good grip on it. There we go. piece under there. Now I found that when I have little areas like the center of the snowflake, I do keep a little piece of pink tape rolled up to whisk those little bits away or if they're stuck on the end of my weeding tool, I can stick them to my pink tape. Just helps keep that area a little cleaner and then I don't have little bits of vinyl all over the place. Kind of like a little tiny lint roller. Make sure that you use a very gentle touch with that pink tape so that you don't pull small areas off that need to stay on your design. Okay, so it's all weeded. Our adhesive side is up and we would be ready at this point to iron it and fuse it to the project of our choice. Okay, makers, we have covered a lot of ground here today. Yes. We've talked about uh, embossing with embroidery designs. We have talked about your subscription-based embellish maker software and craft and cut software. We have talked about how to work with puffy foam. We have talked about how to work with mylar. Um, we've walked through the projects that use each of those techniques. We walked through chenille. We've shown you some various colorways. Um, we've shown you how to use those last little bits of your beautiful vinyls and glitter vinyls, how to rescale your SVG files right there at your scan and cut. We have talked about, I think I already said colorways. Um, we have talked about our trick with our Sharpie markers. And um, doing your templates. Cre oh, creating our templates for yes. layout. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we want to just cover the last couple of projects that are in here. They're going to be recaps because they do hit all of the techniques that we have talked about throughout the course of uh, the other projects. So one of them in your notebook, this is um, a little wrap for a soap dispenser. Um, I've chosen to stitch this out and put it in a little canning jar uh, with chocolates. This is the emergency chocolate stash. But the snowflake on here, got a theme there going with snowflakes. These are the same techniques that are used in the Love, Peace, and Christmas uh, project. Uh, this one uses some puffy foam as well. So you're gonna work with your Deco Magic, you're gonna work with puffy foam. 
Uh, and then you're going to add a little ribbon to attach it to the jar. And they did a nice job on the finish so that, mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it's completely yep. all nice and covered. It's not just a piece of elastic. They, you know, they thought it, exactly. it was it's a little well thought out. Yes. It makes a little casing. Casing, thank it's, you. That mm -hmm. was the word that wasn't coming. All right, now the, the cookie platter piece. I love this. This is just such a unique um, way to put something together. So here we have the use of templates. Let's see, I have one in, in the works. So in order to create this, you're gonna start by marking your large circle. And there is a um, paper template for the circle that you can print out and use. Or if you have something large enough at home, I actually had a big bucket that I used <laughs> to mark my circle. Then after the circle was marked, um, this is the piece from the instructions and there are several large appliques I told you I love these ornaments. So I opted to go with the one large ornament, the smaller ornaments, and then rather than embroidering the snowflakes, I'm gonna go back and I had some silver mylar oh. and I've cut snowflakes. Yeah. I, told, I truly was cutting snowflakes for the last couple of days. And I'm gonna adhere those snowflakes to that's the background. Yeah, so yes. again, looking at everything that's in there with fresh eyes. What colors do you like? What elements do you like? What of the processes that we covered are the things that are most appealing to you? And we do try to bounce differently mm -hmm. to give you more ideas. Um, we don't discuss how we're doing it. <laughs> but the only request was, okay, just keep the instructions original. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't go too far out on a limb there. And, and then everything else after that, however you end up finishing it is, is fine. Now, so. Jody, when you stitch this one up, you had a really good suggestion as, as to the sequence of stitch out for this. Yes. So in the instructions, it says to stitch out the zigs or the rick rack at the very end, and it's on a water soluble, so you have to you know get it wet mm -hmm. and wait for it to dry. Yeah. My suggestion is is to do that first. Exactly. Because when you get done with this, then you're ready to sew it down. Now my other suggestion was. Mm -hmm is I actually ran a very, very thin line of glue. Uh -huh. I put that down, I let it dry, and then I came back and I um, stitched it down. Oh, or the other option would be a little piece of wonder tape. Yeah, a little tiny piece yes. of wonder tape. As long as it's as, as narrow as that. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah, but um, I did find that it was just a, a little hard to start, mm -hmm. and so I just put some glue and it was like perfect. Easy peasy after now, that. If you're looking at this thing, but you didn't tell us how to do Rick Rack. Rick Rack is just freestanding lace. So if you remember when we talked about the snowflakes and stitching them out on the wash away mesh, mm -hmm. same exact process. You're gonna stitch these out on wash away mesh. And then I just spritzed it while it was still in the hoop, gave it just a minute or two. And then I was able to pull each of the little pieces of Rick Rack right out of the hoop. Yep. Um, and they're still a little crispy, so I'm hoping that they're gonna be easy to manage when I get ready to stitch them to my project. Well, and you know what else would be cute? Instead of stitching these lines right here, uh -huh. do the zigzag. Oh yeah, that would be beautiful just, on there. Just yep. to make it a, a little bit yep, different. Just to change it up just uh -huh. a tiny bit. Now the other product that was used um, in this piece, I believe was the fusible batting. Um, I also used the fusible batting on my pillow with the truck. Um, and I actually stitched right through the batting. I just like the way that that looks. So um, this is gonna be a great product to use if you are doing a project where you are quilting in the hoop. Beautiful. Because, because it didn't move, uh -huh. it stayed. It was, I, I quilted it on the back. I mean. So that's gorgeous. Yeah. Super quick, super easy. Now the one last project we're gonna talk about here, because this is so fun. <laughs> this is my pajama bears. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the book, they're actually black, but it's like, okay, so I got some funky fabric here and it's like, yeah, black bear is not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He needs to be in his pajamas, so. That is super cute. And yeah. so we have the chenilling technique that's been used here. You have your quilting using, you use the bamboo mm -hmm. um, batting for this one. Yes. I love the feel of this. It is yes. so soft and drapey. This would be great for um, in any type of a quilt, really, or anything, a wall hanging that you want to stay really, really supple. Yeah, and I just stitched in the ditch, and it, ju it just did. I love how it performed. 
Yeah, that's so yeah. sweet. So that's one of the projects I have not stitched out yet, but that's adorable. Well, I was saving it for last because it's like, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. And I thought, well, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go over the edge and went with the red guy. And it's like, okay. It's very it's, cute. <laughs> Looks like the, uh, the Coca-Cola bears. Well, yes, yeah. there you go. And I love that red mat. So mm -hmm. I love the mat thread. So it's like, I had to use it for that. Those so. are beautiful. Yeah. So makers, I hope that you have enjoyed this trip through your embellished license to create uh, box. I know we had a really good time putting these projects together. Yes. Uh, I am inspired to go and recreate some of the projects that we've done. Um, I have some fabulous new favorite products. I love the foil. I can't get enough of this stuff. Um, and the one last thing that I want to leave you with on the foil is that it does come in a white. And you might think, why would I want white oh, foil? Yeah. But imagine if you were doing something on a black t-shirt mm -hmm. or a dark colored fabric. It's really nice to have that white foil as well in addition to the other colors. So if you do have any questions about any of the things that we have covered here today, remember you can always reach out to us at info, I-N-F-O, at MeisnerSewing.com or give us a call at 916- 920-2121. We can't wait to see what you've stitched up. Make sure you share some photos with us. Happy sewing. Happy.